I think there might be a little bit of an engineering difference, a mindset between the two tractor manufacturers about what they're trying to accomplish. As an alternative to an auto throttle, this gives you a little bit more unique functionality. Yeah, so that's that's a feature that's not really common on a lot of competitive tractors. So, so the TYM claims almost a, or exactly a thousand pounds more than the LS. So. Now our loader connection points on this are more recessed. Do both of these machines require you to remove the three-point arms to put a backhoe on it? Where we kind of come in on price on two tractors that seem very similar. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I've got Jake from the tractor yard. And I'm out here today to do some tractor shopping. You guys know I've been in the market for a new tractor. I have a small tractor and a full-size skid steer. And what I really feel like I need is one machine that does the job of both of those machines. So that's what I'm here to look at today. I move big logs, I do brush cutting, I do paid tractor work. I do a wide range of jobs with my machine. And I really like my tractor, but I just feel like it's too small. So I've come up to you, told you what I'm looking for, and I think you've picked out a couple of machines here that you think might fit the bill. So what do we got behind us? So behind us, we've got two different brands, two models that are very similar. Um, they're both 55 horse cab tractors, hydrostat, four wheel drive with loaders. Um, we've got the TYM T574, and we've got the LS MT357. Yep. I think these two models, I've, you know, I'm not new to tractor shopping and I actually came to the tractor yard because I've shopped here before and I've shopped at other dealerships and I feel like as far as a knowledgeable staff and a great price, it was worth me, worth it for me to drive a little further to come up here. Plus I found a guy who will get on camera and share some information. But these two models are exactly the size and type of tractor I'm looking for. So what we're going to start with we want to talk about price and specs and all of that, but what I want to start with is walking around the machines and trying to spot differences. You know, tire size, any kind of feature that we can notice that there's a difference between them. All right, so we're going to start here at the back of the tractor, and I'm just going to say what I see. So the first thing we've got is this lever here, which lets you raise and lower your three-point arms to make it easier to hook up your attachment without climbing in and out of the tractor. This is a really nice feature you see on a lot of tractors in this size and class range. This is a windshield washer fluid. We've got our lights here, cab lights, rear wiper. Okay, our top link you'll notice has a extra mechanism that mine doesn't have. This is your draft control, which is basically a way to stabilize your depth on, on a ground engaging attachment. Uh, it's a really nice feature to have. We have a fixed housing over the three point and it's got a little bolt on cover to keep that clean, which is kind of nice. Although I don't know if I'm the guy who would put it back on every time or not. Another thing I like is telescoping stabilizers. We have that here. And then extendable draft arms. All of those things make it much easier to hook up an attachment and are nice to have, but also I almost expect them on a tractor this size. Okay, as far as hydraulics, you have dual rear remotes, which is something that is a feature I would not, I would not buy a tractor like this without that personally. We've got our fill point and our check point here. They use a dipstick instead of a sight glass. It looks like we have wiring for trailer lights here, but it doesn't have the plug on it. So obviously that's an option. Of course, we've got a really beefy draw bar here. I like this design that it allows you to put something through it in between these two pieces. But the pin on it is a little bit harder to access if you want to extend it or take it out. You have to reach quite a ways up under there. So what did I miss here? I think the only feature that you didn't touch on was just the extendable draft link there, but that's pretty much standard on every tractor. I like any kind of setup that doesn't require me to get out wrenches so like to adjust that. Yeah, so that on is- On mine, I need a wrench. That one is real convenient that you can just slide up, rotate, and then lock down. All right, let's take a look at the LS. Mostly these are gonna be the same features. 
Can you spot anything on this LS that's significantly different than the TYM? These models are so similar. I mean, all the features that come standard on this one is going to be standard on this one. Um, same two sets of remotes, same adjustable links, same three-point lift up and down. Uh, still going to have your reservoir for the washer fluid on the back. Um, drawbar maybe a little less beefy, but also maybe a little bit easier to remove. Trailer plug, though, does come standard on the LS, whereas on the TYM it's an option. I agree with everything he was saying. Looks like it's really easy to take off these lift arms. Telescoping arms here, extendable here, fixed PTO shield, a slide on cover for that. Do you know, do both of these machines require you to remove the three point arms to put a backhoe on it? Actually, both of them you can leave the three point arms on. I like that feature. So as you look at the back of these machines, there's not a lot of difference, really. So while we're back here at the back of the tractors, I want to talk about the capacity of the three-point lift. And this brings up an interesting topic because I've heard it said that every manufacturer does their ratings a little bit different. And some are more aggressive about their claims for what they can lift, and some are more conservative. And we were talking about it, and we've decided in the future we're going to set up a day and we're going to test these capacities because the rating shows a, a real difference between the lift capacities on these machines that I'm not sure really exist. But let's just go over what the ratings are for the three-point lift on these two machines. So the TYM claims almost a, or exactly a thousand pounds more than the LS. So LS at 2,800, TYM all the way up to 3,800 at the three-point. But there is one more important caveat. TYM gives you two numbers, 3,800 at the pins and 3,080 or 3,050 or something like that, 24 inches back. So if LS is giving you that information 24 inches back, then these lift capacities are about the same. But we're not finding that information right now. So we're back on the TYM 574. These back tires are 16.9-24. dash go ahead and tell you the LS is a 17.5-24. I don't know exactly what those numbers mean, but it seems like the tires on this one might be about two inches taller. Now the front tires are exactly the same size. Both machines have the ability to enter from either side with a step. I feel like these steps are a little bit beefier on the TYM. We've got our loader hoses here. They're both removable loaders with Skid steer quick attach. They both have the kickstands right here. Here's our axle design. The cylinder is in front of the axle there. Fuel filter. The This is the subframe for the backhoe. Comes way up under the tractor and attaches actually all the way up here next to the axle. Looks like the same size bucket. You can see we've got a similar setup on the loader there. The backhoe subframe is similar. Now our loader connection points on this are more recessed. Now is that good or bad? Here they're harder to reach, harder to plug in, but they're more protected from getting hit by something. Again we've got the step, it's a little bit smaller. It feels to me like the cab from the outside it's just a little bit smaller on the LS than the TYM, but we'll see when we get inside it. Okay, so let's look at how you pop the hood and just basic placement under the hood of all your service items. Sounds good. I know that the fuel fill location is the same on both machines. On the LS to access underneath the hood, there's a button on the side there. Okay, Pops and then, up. so your, your air filter and your battery are really easy to get to here. So to remove the screen for the radiator on the LS, you've just got a knob here that you unscrew. Loader will have to be up, and then the screen will slide out so that you can easily clean out that radiator while you're in the field. Okay. Yeah, that's a big thing for me. Mine is one of the only models in this class that doesn't have a removable screen in front of the loader. And when you're brush cutting, that's a hassle. So on the TYM, um, in order to get this hood to pop all the way up, you do have to move this brush guard out of the way but the arms there 
are really easy to loosen. And then you just pull down on this side and you've got your access. Same thing, fuel filters right there, batteries right there. And I bet it's got a similar design on the screen. It comes out on this side as well. Yeah, so on the TYM, I guess one less step in order to get that screen out. It does just kind of slide and lock in place. Uh, but similar, you've got to have that loader up. All right, so first I'm going to get in the TYM, see if I notice any differences inside the cab. So it looks like this lever here is kind of in my way on entry. We'll see. Oh, uh, that's not bad at all. Okay, so over here we've got our four wheel drive lever three range transmission right here then we got throttle okay your PTO switch is up here these would be your lights and turn signals you got a regen info so I think this might be the cruise control tilt wheel little things like that matters you know Cup holders seem like a silly thing to talk about until you don't have a place to put your drink. Okay, we've got a 12 volt charging plug here. Two USB ports. Over here, really big and easy to see. You've got our draft control, three point position, and your two rear remotes. You are slightly reaching back to get those rear remotes, but not terrible. Then your joystick, which is a big deal, is down here. It's kind of low. I almost feel like I need to move the seat forward. I will say this has a ton of room. Like when I just put my arm naturally, I'm almost not reaching the steering wheel. So definitely plenty of room, okay? This joystick has the third function controls on it. We've got the two pedal, forward and reverse. They're at a comfortable height. And then on the other side, we've got our brake pedal. It has split brakes and it has this is personal preference, but it has the parking brake style that you see a lot. Not complicated. Parking brake, no parking brake. Simple and easy. Hey, what do you think this is? So that engages your PTO. So you select either manual or you can flip it off or auto. What's auto mean? Uh, so the difference between manual and auto is manual is going to ignore a sensor on your three point. So that auto feature uses that sensor and that sensor once you lift that three point all the way up, it's gonna kick off your PTO automatically. Yeah. Okay, so I usually recommend people just use the, the manual function if they don't have a specific use for auto. Yeah. So they don't shear pins accidentally. So it's nice to have that you have the ability to put this on auto and it will stop your PTO whenever you lift the three point. But this actually engages the PTO. All right, so here's our air conditioning and heating controls. We've got a radio here, dome light, speakers, vents, rear wiper. Let's see how these open and close. They vent open to the front there. It's gonna let a draft come in this way. Pop open the rear. You've got a mirror right here in the cab and then two outside. I kind of like having that one in the cab because those are hard to uh, fiddle with and adjust while you're driving. So I almost missed it. There's a diff lock here. You have an adjustable suspension seat and then this would be your rate of drop for your three point probably. Yep. All right, let's jump in the LS. So we've got a PTO lever here, it's a manual lever. We've got a four-wheel drive engage here and a diff lock right there. Pretty standard locations. Same thing here with the brake pedal and your forward and reverse pedals. All of this feels pretty similar. We've got a throttle here. Linked pedal is a feature I'm a fan of. John Deere calls it auto throttle. Some people don't like it, but you don't have to use it. If you want your machine to throttle up and down based on pushing the pedals, that's your button for it. 
That's not a TYM 574 feature? So they they do, similar to the linked pedal on the TYM, so since the LS is electronically controlled, you can cut that feature on or off. TYM has it all the time. Okay, so that feature is on the 574? It is. Okay. You know, that's I didn't notice it because it's all I ever run, but now that I think about it, I, it, it, it's on there. Okay, so this is PTO on and off. This is, you, you only have, you don't have a mid PTO. So what this does is take your PTO in and out of, if you want to free spin it. Yeah, so that's, that's your mechanical engage or disengage. So you're meshing, unmeshing the gears there. Yeah. Whereas on the TYM, if you noticed, it doesn't have that feature. So it's, it's, fully controlled by an electronic solenoid. Okay, so there's a practical feature to having two PTOs. When you want to engage your PTO, you push the button, or you turn this, I mean, you push down and turn it. And that is how you normally turn it on and off. But if you've got a heavy implement that you can't rotate and you're having trouble getting the splines aligned on your PTO, you can disengage this here and it separates the PTO. So that is a nice little feature up here, we have better placement, I think, for these control levers. These are rear remotes, and these are the uh, draft control and the three-point. Here's your three-range hydrostat lever. I like that it's not over here in your way, even though entry and exit was not a real problem on the TYM. And your loader joystick is out here, so it's got the shorter control stick that's a little bit further away from you but really kind of a similar location, just a little bit higher. So we've got our lights here, we've got our wipers, the horn, hazards, tilt wheel. Key location is down here. The windshield wiper is smaller and down here, whereas on the TYM it's up here. Now, this machine does not come standard with the radio. You can obviously add it in. Uh, here's all your air vents and your speakers for the radio, which would go right there. This cruise control, do you know what this one is? Yeah, so that's, that's a feature that's not really common on a lot of competitive tractors. That is actually an RPM cruise control. So imagine, you know, you're, you're brush hogging, and let's say you're brush hogging up a hill, up and down hills. <clears throat> Well, normally you try to find an RPM that you want to stick to, so we call it 2400 RPMs. Um, with, this, with this LS, if it has that feature, you lock into that specific RPM, and if it requires it, it will throttle up for you so that you don't have to sit there and work your hand throttle. Um, so it's really a nice feature to have on a hydrostat when you're doing a lot of brush hogging. Yeah, I like the sound of that. So I'm kind of a fan. It feels like there are a few more advanced features on the LS. The windows pop open about the same. The back glass is designed the same, but we got a zip tie here that keeps it from opening. So as I sit in here, what I think about is there are a couple of more advanced features I like, but I think it's also a little bit more crowded. And I, I kind of liked sitting in the other one better. One thing I'm not crazy about is the location of the emergency brake. With your armrest down, you can hardly reach it. It's not bad when you lift the armrest. Did I miss anything important inside of here? I think you nailed it. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Every now and then. <laughs> We're getting ready to go over specs and pricing. But first, I want to show you two other unique things I saw on the lot from other tractor models. Now, I've covered this one before, but I just thought I'd show it real quick because you don't see them in the wild very often. But this is the same tractor we've been looking at, the 357. It's just not a cab model. And it's the Mossy Oak Gamekeeper Edition. So if you want to hide your tractor from the deer or you just like the look of it, it's still a heck of a machine. This is the new redesigned 2 series from LS and it's probably the next time I'm here I'm going to make a video about these there are a lot of interesting features to like on this tractor for something a little smaller but one of them is a throttle function an instant throttle on your loader joystick so mainly 
As an alternative to an auto throttle, this gives you a little bit more unique functionality. But if you want your your throttle down lower because you're just like moving stone, you only need the throttle up when you go into the pile and lift. You can hit it right there. One thing we forgot to cover is the lift capacity on the loaders. Yeah, not much to cover there. They're both impressive. They're both 2,700 pounds. And that number, I believe, is to full height. And from what I've seen, I think if you needed to lift something an inch off the ground just to move it, you're getting almost up to 4,000 pounds. Yeah, right out or just over. At the pins. Yep. So that's most of the time when you see a number, think of it as a safe amount you can carry or what you could get to max height if you wanted. But at ground level, you're going to have more than that which relates to me because I, run, I need to move some logs that are three to 4,000 pounds and I might be able to just get one just high enough to get it on the mill. Yep. So those specs don't tell you everything. We've covered most of the observable stuff from someone who's just walking around looking at it or looking at the spec sheet. But after our talk and what I've seen here, I think there might be a little bit of an engineering difference, a mindset between the two tractor manufacturers about what they're trying to accomplish. And I'll let you talk a little bit about what you see there. Yeah, so I guess the best piece of advice I can give to someone who's shopping both LS and TYM, which is a lot of people, um, they're, they're similar in the fact that they're both very well thought out, very heavy, very competitive brands in general. Uh, the difference between the two really is in that engineering aspect. So the TYM is going to be through and through a more simple machine, period. Sometimes that makes them a little bit more rough around the edges in terms of operation, um, but a lot of guys like simple. The LS is gonna be a little bit more refined. It's gonna have a few more of those techie features maybe um, that are gonna make it more refined, smoother, uh, quieter in the cab. Um, you know, in some, some instances, you know, you'll pay a little more, in some instances you'll pay a little less, so. So both of those points of view from those two manufacturers touch my soul in a different way. So I love the auto throttle. Everyone can have their own opinion. It doesn't matter. I personally really enjoy it. It feels more like running a car. It saves a little bit of fuel. And there are multiple features like that on this machine. And I like that personally. But I also like the idea of simplicity because sometimes I think, why doesn't a manufacturer make an all steel tractor with almost no features that's as heavy and overbuilt as you could possibly make it. And I've had a lot of people who have old tractors make that appeal to me. Yeah. And so the simplicity in design, one thing specifically we, we mentioned is there's a difference in how they regen. Yeah, so so in general, all your LS tractors are going to be able to, to perform a regen while you're moving, while you're operating the tractor. Uh, they do that by having an, an active burner system, whereas the TYM, in general is going to have a passive system where you do have to stop, park, perform your regen that usually takes, you know, maybe up to 30 minutes or so, uh, and then you're then you're back going. Yeah, and I, I really, I like being able to work while it's doing the regen. And I've also ha heard a lot of people personally tell me that their TYM hardly ever regens, but yep. that's anecdotal, but. Yep. And so now we've talked about there's the differences and everything we could think of comparing these two tractors. Where are we going to come in on price on two tractors that seem very similar? So the price difference between those two tractors is actually about $5,000 right now. Um, now that could change month to month, programs change, rebates change. Uh, right now, that 574HC, our cash price at the tractor yard right now is going to be $34,500. That LS tractor that's really similar, you know, a few more nice features, is going to be $5,000 higher than that, $39,500. Yeah. And for reference, I'm not just speculating here. I really want one of these machines. And I went to the John Deere dealership last week and I was looking at 71,000 for what I consider to be the most comparable tractor to this. Well, so I priced a 4066 and 4052. It, these fall in between that on horsepower. But basically you're talking about a $70,000 machine compared to 35 and 39. Yeah, it's a, it's a good buy no matter how you cut it, no matter which way you go. I want to pause it right here and just do a clarification to make sure I'm being accurate. I got the $71,000 quote on a 4066, but after 
saying that in the video, I remembered that that included a backhoe, which is not included in our other prices. So I think the price without the backhoe is right around 60000 And it's always hard to do exact apples and oranges comparisons between tractor models of different brands. But we're talking about an extra $25,000 for the John Deere. So I think we did the best job we could possibly do to compare these two models in a parking lot. But what I've been thinking is a real comparison happens in a field or a wood yard. So I've been giving this guy a hard time that if we could take these to my house, we'd be a lot better off. So Sounds like a fun time. Just got to figure out who's going to write that check. Right. <laughs> so now let's say that somebody's watched this whole thing. He said, that Jake from the tractor yard is one heck of a guy. I want to get a tractor from him. Where are they going to look you up? Where are you located? Yeah, so we're, we're in Coweta, Oklahoma. Um, best way to find us is going to be on our website. It's thetractoryard.com. Or you can call us 918-486-4464. But you know, if you're if you're far away from us, doesn't matter. Give us a call. Let's talk about some tractors because this tractor, the specific one, is getting picked up next week and going to Alaska. So you're not too far away from us. You know, let's 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 have a conversation. And they sell Branson Bad Boy LS and a wide range of mowers. So hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to. Uh, show us me and everyone else these two tractors yeah so. appreciate you coming and appreciate y'all watching